now what I thought would be the main event. <laughs> I will call to order a public hearing um, for the proposed changes and increases to water rates for Bethlehem utility customers. Um, as we did before, uh, I'll open it up for comments. Who would like to begin? <laughs> it it seems to be my destiny to go first. But I, <laughs> I, I do want to speak uh, about this. This is, as you know, a topic that is very dear to my heart. Uh, Name and Colonial Drive. Sorry, I know. Um, when uh, when Rich Strayton and Paul Zykowski and I were first elected in 2009, in the course of our first term of office, we made an unpleasant discovery. And that discovery was that our water system had been neglected for several decades. There had been no capital planning, no change in the rates, um, very little repair work. Um, it was run on a shoestring budget, and at the time that we took over, in fact, a month after uh, we took the, the oath of office in December of 2000, uh, 2009, uh, the uh, bond, rating, bond rating agencies downgraded Bethel's bond rating to negative watch. And the reason for that was that our water system was about $2.9 million in debt and losing about $100,000 per year. At that time, the town was reporting only $6 million in its general fund as unreserved uh, uh, surplus. Uh, $3 million of that was an IOU from the utility department because the system was not generating enough uh, revenue to even sustain itself, uh, let alone plan for the future. Um, the, we, so we had, a, a, then shortly after that, uh, the state of Connecticut issued a citation to the town of Bethel and a warning that we were delivering uh, water that had cancer-causing materials in it uh, through, through, from trihalomethanes from poor water treatment. So to make a long story short, we needed to invest in a multi-million dollar, to, uh, in fact, uh, Mr. Bill would probably give, give us the, the correct number as it stands today, but at the time we were looking at a $24 million price tag to renovate the water system, which the Public Utilities Commission uh, board of selectmen work together for the next uh, seven years to do. So the reason I'm going through all this is what the Bethel, what the town of Bethel has is its own water company. It owns a water company. It's a nonprofit water company. And it must generate enough revenue to break even. It cannot go in the red because if it goes in the red, it will bankrupt the town. And as I mentioned, uh, that first year we took over, 50% of the undesignated general fund was not there. It was going out the door in terms of losses. So I know that people are going to fault and, and say, you know, a, a price increase of this magnitude is too much. Um, I just want to point out that the good news is, is that as it stands today, we have one of the best well-run water systems in the state of Connecticut. Um, and I take that directly from the Department of Public Health. And uh, I want to thank Mr. Villa for his outstanding work in that area. Um, but it's imperative that we keep the revenue strong enough to keep the system solvent, to plan for the future, to pay for the upgrades that are necessary. Um, the benefits are enormous, not only in terms of clean drinking water, but uh, fire suppression, having adequate water supply to handle the uh, agricultural needs, the residential needs, the business needs. We would not have been able to have the vote tonight to, to sell that property at Clark Park if we had not fixed the water system. And that costs money. Um, this is not an uncommon problem in the United States. Uh, the, uh, engineering, uh, for the engineering consultant firms uh, estimate that uh, insufficient water systems uh, in the United States today nationally would cost $3 trillion to fix or will cost $3 trillion to fix over the next 30 to 40 years to bring them up to code because most of the water systems were installed after World War II with grant monies and then municipalities, counties, cities, and so on failed to set aside enough money to keep them in good shape. We've done the right thing in Bethel with the support of our, our voters. We have refurbished our water system. We're investing in it properly. It's not, it's not charging too much. It's charging enough to remain solvent and provide that service. So I urge this uh, price change that 
rate increase that, that must be considered to go through. It's important. So I'm going to speak in favor of that. Thank you. Thank you. Actually, yeah. Hi, I'm Emily from AO3 Four again. So uh, I'm so sure what uh, the, what is your name, please? Matt Nickerbocker. Oh, oh, you you were the the first like not before. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so Matt, um, I I think you said that the better has better has his own non-profit water company. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. I just printed this from like the Connecticut City .gov, and it says that Aquarium Water Company has so, like provides water to some streets in better too. Yeah, the northern part. So yeah. So this yeah, so is why so this like but then Bethel has some areas and then Aquarium has some areas, I guess, or something yeah. like that. With your permission, of course, Mr. Chair. Uh, uh the the from about the middle of Bethel south. And on, the, and on either side of Bethel is provided by the town of Bethel's water system. But if you live north of where the old uh, police station was, that's a private water company. That's uh, that's Aquarian. And of course, that's not managed by the town. And that's regulated by the state of Connecticut, by the Public Utility and Regulatory Authority. So if you if you have live in an Aquarian area, what no, no, I, I don't. I don't. That, oh, that's okay. why I'm here. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't. So, but I think I think the the water, uh, the the uh, what we are paying right now is is um is 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 high enough already. Um, here, um, for a five eight meter, uh, we pay for six thousand gallons, forty two dollars and sixty nine cents. That the town of Denbury pay twenty three dollars and eight cents. So we pay almost double that. Um, for sewer for a five eight meter, the town of Bethel pays sixty six dollars and sixteen cents for six six thousand gallons, and then we pay thirty eight dollars point seventy two, which again we pay double already. Um, I don't know if it's because maybe Denbury has more people than Bethel, uh, but I don't know. It it should be based on water, not based on the amount of people. I I don't know. I think. And also, I don't know if you guys are aware that um I I I I I I I I, did, I research uh, some some stuff. Uh, sure. I don't know if you guys are aware that um the uh, wait a minute uh the Connecticut Public Utility Regulatory Authority Pura um they approved a financial decision that rejects Aquarium Water Company proposed multi-year distribution rate increase just like. And it was like over five years, like how you guys are pretending to do here in Bethel too. And Pura uh, on March 15, 2023, they deny that. They deny that, that increase to Aquarium Water Company and because they didn't provide enough proof that why they needed to increase uh, that much. And the um, the, gen the state general attorney, uh, Mr. Uh, William Tong, uh, also released a statement uh, praising a final decision by the public authority, youth regulatory authority uh, denying uh, uh, the increase for two aquarium. And uh, Mr. Uh, William Tong also uh, says that uh, this is an aggressive pro-consumer decision by Pura. Connecticut families pay far too much for the utilities. This relief is well timed and surely needed. And my office opposed this hike from day one. Um, so uh, my question is, uh, I don't know uh, from from like this is just a meeting right now, like mm -hmm. the first uh, a meeting, like you hearing maybe feedback from like the public. Uh, maybe you will take this further. Uh, my question is. Uh, when do I put a complaint to Pura if you con like if this goes like okay. if, if if you wanna really uh if this is gonna <clears throat> really be considered to be implemented because I think it's my right to put a complaint to Pura about this because I really think that paying double than them beauty is already is already a lot. Sure. Um, so I understand. Let me stop you there for one quick second. So we 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 regulate our own water authority. Pura doesn't regulate the Bethel Water Authority. Oh, so that's so why we have no it. So, so right now, like Pura would have a public hearing. Pura would consider it as a body and make a vote. That's what we're doing here. This okay. is the public hearing. And, and something we probably should have started with, but I just wanted to see kind of where it was coming. Maybe we have Tom Bill. We, we have, I believe, uh, a breakdown of the numbers. 
Yes. Right. So let's go ahead and put that up if that's okay. So, excuse me. So yeah. I cannot complain to Bura because this is like a town. So the town sorry for my yeah. ignorance. I don't know. Oh, no, no, I it's good. Nobody would know. Um, I, yeah. I don't know. So I guess I can complain to the general attorney then. The, the attorney general, th th this is who you complain to right here. Right here. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> yeah. So what I'd like to do, you want to go ahead while she said it up? Did you have a comment? Yeah, but I just I just wanted to point out something real quick. Uh, yeah. Because it might help understanding. Uh, Danbury has a different water structure. They have what's called a progressive rate structure. Mm -hmm. So think of it like paying a, a certain price per gallon or per cubic foot, foot feet of water. Danbury's price structure is set so that if you are a large industrial user of water, you actually pay a higher rate for the water. That, so it's like paying more for, more for that water per gallon the more you use instead of less. So what that does, it, it means that the businesses in Danbury are subsidizing residential users and keeping their water rates lower. So it, it's tempting to compare the two rates, but they're not an apples to apples comparison. Right. Uh, Bethel, by the way, used to have a regressive rate when, when we started in 2009, which meant that we were giving a price break to heavy users, which does not encourage conservation. Over a 10 year period, we leveled it so that everybody pays the same amount per, per cubic foot. Okay. Uh, Danbury is one of the few cities left in the state. Uh, there's, a, there's about maybe five or six that have a progressive rate structure that uh, allows residents to pay less, but that it's rare. Thank you. So so let's get started on this. I wanna, I wanna bring one thing up and we'll have Tom sure. Villa talk about it. Unless you wanna talk about the background, but between 2014 and what, 2022, we had a number of large capital projects as Matt uh, Nickerbach was speaking about. And if you look at that and kind of where we are now looking forward to the Bergstrom well and the projects we have, we probably have somewhere around what, 15 million, 700,000 in loans that we're looking at. But the big part of this too, is one of the reasons it's going up is because we have the Bergstrom well project now. And the Bergstrom Well Project was an important part of what we needed to do to update our water system. If you recall, we used to get a lot of our water from surface water, from reservoirs. But for us to go do those reservoirs, and, and I would say fix them and get them back up where they need to be, it's exorbitantly expensive. So the town over the years had kind of moved forward towards groundwater. And we have a Bergstrom Well Project. And with that, we're going to be having debt from part of our payment of that. A lot of it came from grants and things like that, but I think there's somewhere in the neighborhood of what, seven million some odd dollars that we'll be paying for uh, in the future. And that's what you're seeing as this comes along is we're going to be having debt service that's starting. And then we have a few of our own smaller capital projects with Tom Villa will kind of explain. Zoomed a little or enlarged yeah. or no? Uh, you see on this side, it's better. It's yeah. This side, this side. Yeah. Yeah, basically, okay. what I, this is Tom Villa, uh, Public Utilities Director. I think Matt Matt gave a really good overview of some of the projects as Dan just started uh, jumping in with, and just some specific projects. What we've done between um, 2014 and 22, um, 2022, the projects that we've completed at, were about $14.6 million, $7.8 million in loans. So when you, when you see some of this debt service here in, in the current year, that's paying off those loans for those projects that we've just completed in the last seven or eight years. And, and really those projects revamped entirely our, our water system. We, we did um, two replacement wells, which basically supply the whole, our whole system, which is gonna enable us to kind of phase out, which we have already phased out the use of those surface water plants. We put two large water storage tanks into service. Prior to those tanks, really there was minimal storage in the distribution system. You need the storage for firefighting, for um, you know your peak days, for any emergencies, large main breaks, that type of thing. Um, we we revamped three pump stations, uh, replaced about four emergency generators, and replaced about uh, three miles of pipe with all new services to the people that live along those, those mains. So, so that was the 14 plus million, the 7.8 million in loans, which there's our debt service, basically what we're paying back in those loans. But another important thing to know is with the program that we got involved with, the, uh, the, the state of Connecticut's um, uh, 
the drinking water state revolving fund. There was a lot of loan money. And especially back early on in 2014, 2015, there were not a lot of small companies going out. I'm sorry, I said loan. I meant grant money. So we did get over like $2.4 million in grant money. Um, so it was definitely advantageous to go through that kind of program. And these loans were low interest, 2% 2, 2 loans. Um, so that's projects we've completed. Projects that we have um, ongoing mm -hmm. now, and, and Dan mentioned the Bergstrom well. <laughs> what that's going to do for us there, it's it's a it, it will also it's another supply that'll feed the entire town, so that we're not just dependent on the one well field that we have. We'll have two sources that can feed the whole system. And again, when we did the Bergstrom um, uh, special town meeting and public hearing, basically, without doing the groundwater Bergstrom well, we would have been stuck with the two surface plants. And, and it really was not economical uh, to revamp those plants based on the limited yield. They only provided so much water. The, the Bergstrom well is going to give us over a million gallons a day of, of, of supply. Um, but unfortunately, with the cost increases of the last couple of years, with the supply chain issues and so on, construction costs have probably exceeded what inflation has been. Um, that project has gotten up to like... Um, $12.3 million. Um, the good thing with that project, um, I was able to separately get us a, an EPA grant of about 1.6 million. And in dealing with the state, we got ourselves a, about a $2.8 million grant as well through that uh, state revolving fund program. So we got that 12.3 million total. We got about 4.4 million in, in grant money. So basically the loan money for that project is going to be on the order of another $7.9 million, which that's the kicker. That loan should come due in fiscal year 25, 26. It's going to basically double our, our debt service. So that, that's really the driver to the rate increases that we're looking at. Um, what you're looking at here, we took our current year revenue and applied out the 8.5% a year. We took our OM&A expenses, which is operating maintenance and administrative expenses. And I, I kept it at a low, assuming I may be off with that, but assuming um, inflation settles down, I, I, I bump those at about 3%. If those numbers do go up, if it's 4%, then the net money we're going to have at the end is, is going to then be less, obviously. So um, what you're seeing then is what, what our balance is, our revenue minus our OM&A and debt. And again, you, you can see for capital, compared to what we've been doing in capital, we're kind of now scaling back on what we're going to do for capital projects in the next couple of years. Basically, because over the last eight years, we've done so many improvements in the town. I think, you know, we'll, we're going to be able to kind of just pull back on, on, on doing some proactive projects. But we do have to have some capital money on Maple Avenue Wells, which in these last two years, some of those improvements are for the generator. That building is was built in the '60s. It's going to get need to get revamped. Um, so that, that's kind of where we're at with with the dollars. Um, we looked at um, and 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 the PUC looked at, in addition to this proposed rate increase, five other options uh, for different scenarios. I started out looking at at five percent a year, and basically we were in the red every year. So. Between what we what we settled on with eight and a half, uh, the commission really didn't want to pick a, a rate increase that was over ten. One of the options was a twenty in the first year, followed by fives. But unfortunately, with all the improvements we've done to the system, they've now got to you know basically be paid for, it. and that tells the tale there. <laughs> We didn't raise the rates for sure. Yeah, I was going to mention numbers. So it, it is important to realize that the rates have not raised since 2021. And part of the reason I think was you know, it was given that we were waiting to see what the debt service would be on the Burbs from Well. Um, so that's part of the reason. Um, and I and I will say, because one of the biggest concerns I had is that this was figuring 3% inflation. I think that's I think it's bold. <laughs> I think mean, if it's four percent inflation, it changes these numbers pretty dramatic drastically, and we're we're barely making it in the end. Um, so that's why the you know, the Public Utilities Commission looked at it. This kind of came out as the best opportunity. If you look at the end there, 
the $340,000 that that may or may not be there at the end of five years. Um, in fact, the second year you can see we're in the red, but overall, you know, we're expecting to have a little bit extra, but I think the, you know, the inflation might wipe that out. It's also important to look at, um, if you look at the, the $42 number that he has on the bottom, that number is where you pay up to 6,000 gallons of water. Yeah, that's, that's the minimum the, charge. That's the minimum charge rate. Um, so if you're making, if you're doing anything less than 6,000 ga 6, gallons, that's your rate. Um, and then that goes up for what, $20 a quarter. That's still far, even at the top, that's below where Aquarian is now. That's a, Aquarian's current rates will not, will, will be already or higher than what it's going to be at the end of that 6,000 gallons. And that's kind of important because we are talking about Pura and um, with Aquarian, what they need to do, you know, they're facing a lot of, uh, a lot of the things we faced having to upgrade different things across the state. I think we've done it smart in Bethel and it's probably the minimum we can get by with because at some point we do need to invest in this. We need to invest in Burson well. And it's still going to be less than Aquarius charging on the Northern Town. Um, One other thing about the jump in, yeah. we didn't have rate increases since 21. Yeah. Had we raised rates in the last three years, even if they were small chunks, three to 4%, we probably at the end of the five years still end up being where we're going to end up being. Right. The eight and a half a year now might have been slightly less, but we still need to pay off the debt, basically. Sure. And I'm, I, I just wanted to point out that yeah. after yeah. until right. 21, yeah. our rates were still below the midpoint, the median for the state, and below the average for the state, even with the, the yeah. massive investment that we had. Cynthia McCordenville, 19 Elton yeah. Avenue. Yeah, our rates are lower than Aquarian. That's not what they thought 10 years ago when they tried to sell the water department to Aquarian. And uh, and, and I knew, and the people who supported uh, keeping our water department, we knew that it would be a little bit of money down the road. Um, I never thought that we, it would be more than Aquarian. Stony Hill is, is owned by Aquarian, but that was sold by a guy who had a private water company to Aquarian, which at the time was a subsidiary of a Australian hedge fund, and um, now is owned by Eversource. So you know, it just takes all the all the neighborhoodiness out of it. I mean, it's just a vast empire. So we do have our own water department, and I think it's great. But here's something that when I see this, I say to myself. Because I, I am very wary of all the, you know, the building going on in Bethel. And it seems to me, and maybe this is a crazy yeah. idea, but I've been saying it for a while. I don't understand why uh, part of making uh, a deal with the developer shouldn't include some sort of infrastructure surcharge or some kind of thing where you're going to build like, you know, 50 apartments in a building. Then this is what you have to pay for, it's just a one-time fee. It just seems unreasonable that what's happening is everyone's saying, oh, this building is so great for the town and this and that and the taxes are, you know, we're gonna get more revenue. Yet, you know, it's the residents that are taking the hit. I think that there has to be more um, give and take between developers because they're profiting from it too. You, you want to comment to that, Tom? Yeah, there, there is a fee. Um, okay. When the developer comes in and, uh, for instance, the summit, however many units there are up there, they, they paid a water fee and a sewer fee, permit fee. It was roughly $500 per unit. So your example of a 50 um, unit development is going to pay about a $25,000 fee. Okay, that's good to know yeah. because, uh, you know, there is a lot of building going on. Yes. And I'm sure the infrastructure at some point has yeah. to be expanded. Sure. But is it be monthly or monthly? no, it's it's a one time it's, it's hard to budget for. So I you you don't really crank we, we put a number yeah. in the budget, but you, you know you, you can't figure on getting a hundred thousand dollars in permit fees. Yeah it may not be that much building. Right. And you don't you don't want to you know throw a budget number in there and then come short. So we, we budget low and when the when the projects come in the fee comes in. Okay. And then I think we had the, the gentleman right there had his hand up next, and then yes. it was Tim, Matt, or you, and then no, no, I'm, no, I'm good. Thank you. Yes, uh, I'm, I'm Jan Zabarker. I'm uh, from some Pleasant Street um, close by. Um, my question is, is uh, what's what's the outlook for after year five? 
um, because like a and, and when does the debt retire? Well, there's a long term debt. We're talking what thirty years? Twenty years. Ah, uh, they're usually twenty year loans. Okay, we, we probably started picking in those loans in like twenty seventeen, yeah. twenty sixteen. So there, there's still a fair amount of time. Okay, so that so yeah. that nine hundred fifty seven thousand is going to last. It's going to it's going to last. Keep going through the yeah. CZ. Okay. Yeah. And listen, you could probably envision that maybe there's a day where we break even or we lower the rates again. Well, yeah, I mean, you never know. You see, it in, but it'll be long. It'll be a long time. <laughs> yeah. But but you see in your five, like yeah. I mean for granted these are kind of fuzzy, fuzzy numbers, but we're starting to build up. Yeah. You, you're clearing three hundred forty three thousand in that year. Yeah. And again, based on three percent inflation. Based on based on a whole bunch of assumptions it, that yeah, yeah assumptions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hopefully. Yeah. Some of them, by the way, some of the assumptions we put out, they were all red. And we just put in good <laughs> conscience to like operate the water company yeah. in the red. Because mm -hmm. again, that that comes straight from the taxpayer and the general fund. I'm sorry, uh, I think it was yeah. Tim next to Tim Evil, uh, 63 Brassy Plain. Yeah, I'm I'm thinking that maybe you should be focusing in on just the four years. I mean, in the fifth year, your revenue, in, because of the increases, your revenue increases by 300000 and you have a $343,000 surplus. Mm -hmm. So there was no need for an increase that year. And yeah, we don't know what inflation is going to be. So, you know. Four years is probably a good time frame, and then three years from now we can kind of reevaluate where we are. Mm -hmm. um, but the question I have, and and probably for Tom, is how many of the current customers, and what percentage of the of the current customers are now at or below uh, on a regular basis the six thousand gallon rate? It's our twenty fifth percentile are at six thousand or less. So so that when I look at that. I'm seeing 25% of the customers are subsidizing people who are using more water. And so I've I've talked to some elderly who say, look, it's just not fair. I never get that way. The system has no incentive to save water because I'm never going to hit the 6,000 gallons anyway. I might as well water my lawn. And so instead, lower the base rate. The, the base level, instead of 6,000 gallons, maybe it's 4,000 gallons. And whoever's above six thousand, they're going to be paying for extra anyway. But again, take a look at that, so that twenty five percent of your customers are not subsidizing the seventy five percent that are over that level. I think we have the gentleman in the end next, so then you start off from that. Bill Howard, sixty three Hill Drive. I'm the president of the Summit Homeowners Association, by the way. And we never pay much. To I have a technical question. How are you going to do this? Because we're uh, we need a budget for that. Um, when does it? If you go ahead with these raised increases, let's start getting our bills. Uh, I believe for January is what we said. Tom, is it really depending if we vote on it? We will which be, uh, that'll be decided on. Yeah. yeah, it really depends when when we institute it. Whenever the actual meeting takes place. Yeah. It, it would be the, either in the January bill or the oh, April bill. Oh, what year? Of, of this next year. 24. 24. Well, the, right? If you, if you start it as of January 1, right. okay, that will cover the January through April period. Those right, so the bill would show those up. Those bills go out in May. It, yes. They're due yeah. June 1st, and I think you have till June 30th. Wait, this is good so, again. So you're currently in 24. Yeah, your first your first quarter is bill twenty four. What's your fiscal year? Yeah, what's your fiscal year? The, the, this it's the same fiscal. But we're going we're going to start this next quarter, right? Did I get that right, Tom? That's again a decision. Yeah. Well, that that depends. What that's kind of what the planning is. If depending what the board of arrives on, because this all this is a public hearing where we haven't made any decision. Oh, that's sure. kind of where we're looking. Since we, um, what do we look at? The land parking association, not the mm -hmm. individual, not the 242 homeowners. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and A lot. And we've done our budgets already. Mm -hmm. This is going to hit us. Very heavily in the budget year we've already started. Understood. 
Um, when you're saying, I, I, I understand the numbers at the bottom is the uh, the, mid, the base charge. What, what's the eight and a half? Here's the eight and a half percent hit as, at the at the revenue right now. The charge is eight eighty five over six thousand gallons. It's eight eighty five per thousand gallons over six thousand. Does it stay there? No. Does that go up eight and a half percent? That goes up the eight and a half percent too. So the numbers along the bottom then will tell you what that your your per thousand gallon charge is. Okay. Uh, sewer charges changing? No, not at all. No, no. And no plan to stay. Not right now. So they'll stay the same. Right? Yeah. They'll stay be at 56, 16, or 580. Okay. Yeah, nothing with sewer right now. No, no reason to. Because that's based on water. You know that. So realistically speaking, you'll, the board will take this off shortly. Yes, it'll. It, we're we're going to get together as a board of selectmen and decide when we're going to do this, and that's part of the public hearing. Um, what bill would you have you seen this at if they pass it? Sorry, what bill would you be seeing this at if they pass it? So if we pass it, you'll see an eight and a half percent increase in your next quarterly budget. Which would be May. Which would be May. 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 Yeah. May. If we do it, if we start in January, so we, yeah, be January, February. Wait. Well, the bill would go out in April. <laughs> it would go out in April. It was due in May. Yeah, it's due in May. Thank you. It's be for the first quarter. Thanks. Okay, so we had, you were next, sir. Uh, James mm -hmm. E. 114 Overdrive. Uh, just a comment and a few questions. So just, Kind of going back to what Matt said about just the water being in a state of disrepair a number of years ago. So I'm all in favor of like making sure our water is good because I'm just thinking about like Flint, Michigan. I'm just like, I don't want any parts of it, right? Uh, so I'm all for it if that's what's necessary. As far as my question for this, what were uh, what were the rate increases prior to 2021 and what, how? How much did the OMA expect to increase prior to current year? The uh, the rate increase that was enacted in 2016 covered a five year period, so 16 through 21, and it was um, it was 3.5 percent for I think the volume rate, and I think it was 3.75 for the minimum charge. I could have that backwards, but those were here. You go. It was 3.75 for the minimum charge. Three and a half for the volume metro. And what was it before that? And prior to that, um, I have some numbers here. I can find them. There was a couple of 35s, there was a couple of 20s. So, um, so prior to, prior to 2016. Yeah, there you go. I, I, I think um, it's important to realize those were, those were big jumps, yeah, you know, smaller the, dollars, but we, those were when we were doing all the big repairs. That, yeah. From 2012 through 2016, you had a, a 35, a 35, a 25, followed by a five and a three. And, and then you had the five years at like three, three and a half, right? Right. So it's important to realize that really, again, it's the well, it's the well, and they'll be improvements we have to make now that are driving these increases. And, and we are keeping them at the minimum we possibly yeah. can. But at some point, we did have to do another well. You couldn't have just one well and not have any kind of surface water or because those would have taken a lot of money to upgrade. Right. So we chose the well. And we're in, a, we're in a very unique situation at that point. We were under a couple of big aquifers. We were very, very fortunate that, and we're fortunate that we kept our water system. Uh, one other thing, our maple wells um, really doesn't require any treatment. You have to disinfect it and we have to add a uh, corrosion inhibitor. The water quality is meets all the state standards. It's clean. It's the Bergstrom well, which when we started out looking into it, you know, once we knew we had water, that was the place to go. Um, but when we did the water testing, I assumed, I was hoping that it would be in the same kind of quality. However, the reason that's expensive, we have to have a filtration system for it. 
So at least on the Maple Avenue side, you know, it's relatively inexpensive to treat. The Bergstrom, of course, we, we have to filter. The other thing, if I could, um, you talked about Danbury's rates. I, I didn't really present this because uh, Ty and Bond is an engineering company. They would do a, uh, a water rate survey every two years. Unfortunately, the last one they did was um, uh, 2019. So it's really not up to date numbers, but it's, and I, I really don't have this you know, show, but you can see going from least expensive is Danbury. And, and these are all based on 15,000 gallons uh, per quarter. Okay. Danbury was at 133 bucks. We're, we're kind of in the middle, almost to the middle. Again, 2019 at 459. These, these are per year. Aquarian, um, a little bit higher than us, 528. And you can see it goes down to the most expensive in here is uh, cane and water. $840 a year for the same. So it varies completely system to system. Um, remember some of the private utilities and most of them are private. They're investor owned. So they make a profit for their investors. They're, all, they're the companies that are regulated by Pura. And although Pura denied that Aquarian rate increase, I know Aquarian is, is, is appealing that. And I'm sure something's gonna come of that. I couldn't say what. I don't know that it's going to stand with a zero rate increase. No. Oh, so how how much did the board pay expenses increase prior to the deal? I, I, you know, I, I don't have those at my yeah, okay. yeah. And and also I guess what's the risk of the that projected number being greater than three three percent? I mean Probably, probably will be created at three percent. But um, I think again, you're you're gonna we're gonna still be in the black. This number's still gonna be in the red, but it's gonna really kind of be offset by the first year. So th these two kind of balance each other. If we're at four percent, you, you know these numbers are gonna come down a bit. I think this number was maybe in the teens, um, and this number might have again. I, I don't have that at my fingertips. Right. And that's not cumulative, right? That's just by year. Like that three forty three is just for twenty eight twenty nine. Or is that the cumulative number? From well, it, it's cumulative in that you, you, we bumped our revenue so like, up, you yeah. know, so that there's yeah. there's your leftover. But again, we're, we're not doing a whole lot of capital. Yeah. If something comes up and we've got to replace something or fix something, you know, I, 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 you know, I'm very lean with what I propose for capital. So having a little bit of cushion in that year four, year five, yeah. is really not going to go to waste. Yeah. If anything, it's going to help us then. In year six, when we have to do this again, mm -hmm. those numbers then should be come down. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Or at least that's the yeah, law. Yeah. Straight and then uh, just prior to uh, 2009, the Board of Selectmen had not raised the uh, water rates at all. And at 2009, we learned that the uh, PUC owed the general fund $3 million. That has all been paid back through some of these rate increases in the past years. Uh, also, Danbury, you talk about Danbury's water rates are low right now, but it's just in the paper that they need major uh, uh, infrastructure uh, upgrades in the city of Danbury. So I'm sure their water rates are gonna increase in the near future also. I believe Brad Holtz was next and the gentleman back here. Brad Holtz, one of your child drive still. <laughs> Um, uh, a couple of comments and then a couple of questions. Um, the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill actually maintains a database of average water costs per community per country. I reviewed that today, and while we're looking at minimum charges, the actual average charge, according to them, for Bethel is approximately $48 uh, for, for 6,000 gallons. That's across. You know, first six thousand, so we're losing sixty thousand dollars to pay across the board. Is that based on the uh, just the Bethel system and Aquarian together, or just no, Bethel? No, it's just Bethel. Okay, so they're going to be charged what? Forty. It's about forty eight dollars. Forty eight. Okay. Forty seven cents. Um, Aquarian uh, across the state uh, is averaging, according to them, uh, approximately forty three dollars for the first six thousand dollars. So either they have fewer large users, or I'm not sure what's going 
but also according to the University of North Carolina Chapel Hill, the Connecticut state average expense for the uh, for users for the first six thousand gallons is thirty eight dollars and ninety nine cents. So um, while we're talking about the lower portion of the community having to take a bigger hit, et cetera, I think it would also be helpful to be looking at what some of these averages would be like for us. Um, and and see where that goes. Danbury's green goes a little different um, when you look at their average. Um, I would also point out that our neighbors in Newtown uh, are averaging $73 for the for that first 6,000 years. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to go too far to see a wide disparity. My question is if, if this projection is showing almost, well, somewhere between four and $500,000 in uh, net over this period, if I'm doing the math. I believe the end was a cumulative 343,000. 343 is that yeah. fifth year, 98 is the year before, 79 is That's the year. That's per year, so if you add those years up, right? No, my understanding oh. is that is the, oh. that is basically the cumulative at the end of the last year is 343. Well, That's what we're left with after five years. Not them up. We're not adding it's, them up. It's being included in the next year's projections. Yeah. So you're saying that 343,000 is what this entire thing will net over this five year period. Correct. That's what we should be left with okay. if we have 3% inflation. Okay. Yeah. And, and no extra capital expenses. I'm sorry to interrupt, but that is not a cumulative number. That is a per year number. That's yeah. what I thought. So it's a year end balance. Yeah. It's a year end balance. Right. So it's what we'll have at the end of 2029, right? But it doesn't go back into the revenue in yeah. the year. So no, each one is at the end of that year. Correct, Brad? Each one is what that year as an individual year looks like. Right. So you you would pocket the 189,000, then you're going to take 114 out of it the next year. But then you're going to pocket another 79. Then you're going to pocket another 98. Then you're going to pocket another 343. So, Brad, Brad, explain, explain it one more time. Yeah. So at the end of this, assuming a 3% increase um, in expenses across the board, the cumulative of those years is $595, $596,000 to the good. Um, if you assume a 4% increase in expenses, which we're not showing here, but we did run those numbers, that number goes down to 270. And I believe the last budget year we did when I was in the four and a half range, uh, but there was some major inflation issues in that year. So since we're looking at a program that looks like it's going to show almost a $600,000 profit for the town if the projection mm -hmm. on the spreadsheet that, that is being used. Might I suggest that we chill our jets a little bit with the rate of uh, approved increase. Maybe have a slightly slower increase over the budget. Graduate it up with an understanding that the rate of inflation can be looked at each year. And if you need to spike it up, because inflation spikes up, we'll do it. But I think going into this with putting the burden of that kind of an increase on that many people in this town, where we're projecting according to what's been shown as the document we're looking at and talking about, a $596,000 mm -hmm. positive flow, it seems a bit unconscionable to be hitting people with an eight and a half percent increase and a plan to keep doing that with cumulative 50% increase, sorry, it's 50.2, mm -hmm. um, over that five year period. I'm not saying don't do it if you need to do it, but I am saying please don't plan to do it if you don't have to do it. I would suggest that you come up with something that's a little tamer out of the gate, that you have a regular review. You could even do it mid-year if you want, uh, where in, you know, uh, inflation's gone, what the expenses are relative to the cash flow, and make adjustments. I think the community would be able to bear that dramatically better than your minimum is going to be a 50% mm -hmm. over this five year period. I personally, I think that's staggering um, compared to projected cash flow. And um, uh, if we're looking to privatize it and turn it into a revenue stream, that's one thing. Mm -hmm. then let's 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 just declare that. But if we're talking about covering our costs 
at the minimum required to have an impact on the community, mm -hmm. I think this this plan that I'm looking at is a bit too rich. For this plan. Point taken. Thank you. Thank you. And then we had him next. Uh, Patrick Paraport, 50 Worcester Street. Um, just a couple of questions. The five hundred dollars that were just said that goes towards this when the builder builds a house or a unit, does that go directly to this or to general fund? It, it well, it doesn't go directly to general fund. It stays in the water utility, which is separate. so it stays in right? this. It goes directly. It stays in the water department. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, with the net of whatever it was five hundred thousand, what is the buffer you're looking for? Is it are you looking for more than five hundred thousand? You're looking for four hundred. I understand yeah. you want it, it's not yeah. profit, but you want to cushion. Ironically, um, you know, the discussions we had as a board of selectmen were we're not looking for a lot of buffer. Okay. And I think it came to light tonight with these questions. To be honest, oh yeah, I the three forty three we have thought was the final number. Yeah. We're we've been under the impression when we went through the PUC that the three forty three was what we were left at the end. So yes, each one of those would be a benchmark. One eighty nine the first year would be left over. But then as we went along, we'd lose money the second year in net. And at the end, there'd be $343,000 left over, barring no changes. So frankly, we'll go back and sharpen our pencils because there, there's um, we do not want to carry anything extra. We are not a for-profit company. So your point is well taken. So I wouldn't say, yeah. I, I know it's not profit, but you still, I think, from past I've learned you still want to have some type of buffer in there, I would think. Well, I ideally, well, some, yeah, because yeah. you yeah. never know what's going to break yeah. down. Yeah. Right. But yeah. we haven't we haven't set a number per se. I mean, okay. ideally, right. we wanted to be as close as, as close as possible. Okay. And you know, expenses could be different, yeah. you know, because like we said here, if we if we go down, ideally that last one would be zero. Yeah. And ideally, we would have planned our capital projects all the way through, and nothing major would have surprised us. So, so we're, we're trying to keep it minimal because we're not a for-profit company. Again, that's why we have lower water, water rates in the Aquarium. Right. We're not here to make money. Brian, Brian has a question. Yeah. Um, good. Uh, he, he, right. Oh, Brad has a question. Uh, more of a statement. I know uh, Selectman Straitman said that the water utility doesn't owe the general fund any more money. Um, last uh, oh. audited fiscal year showed that utilities still owed the general fund $862,000. Right. That, but that's current. I'm just talking about past. Yeah, yeah. And right. some of that money is part of this, the engineering work for this project that when we do the loan, we will get something back. So the current estimates around that water owes the town still $300,000. Um, so that one, the 189 in this first year will just decrease that to $100,000 that they owe the town. And then in year two, it would jump back up to 200,000, assuming all of our assumptions are correct. Um, so really the 500 or so thousand that the water department, these rates would increase by, or bring in extra is really only in the 300 range because the, the general fund is owed money by the water utility still. Is there a way we could show that on this graph? So people not here, well, I mean, there's plenty of people in the room you know, if you go online and see this, it would be great to understand that that 189 drops to 100. Yeah. So, you know, they'll, they'll yeah. understand this figure as well. Well, so, this is recorded. Yep. Oh, okay. can, I ask, can I ask Brad a question? I, Brian, I, I heard you. Can, uh, can you hear me? Yeah. So, hold um, on a moment. Okay. Uh, Brian, hold on one moment because we, we have, we're finishing a question here with Mr. Pairford. So, oh. the only other, uh, question I have being a landlord of a multifamily I've asked numerous times this expense I have to pass on to my tenants yeah. and you have to estimate and I'm not going to estimate low I'm going to estimate high because I can't lose money with all the concerns over rents and level all that I've asked numerous times if you could get separate water meters for the apartment I've been told level does not want to deal with the paperwork for doing the bills. With getting a 50% increase over five years, maybe it's time they can deal with the hassle so I can do it. Even if the bill's in my name, I could do a pass-through account, save the landlord money, save me money, lower the, or lower the rank, keep them steady, but at least they're paying for what they're using. And it could just be a pass-through. 
it could be in my name. That's fine. If it doesn't get paid, it comes after me. But I know the system can do it. I've just been told they don't want to do the hassle of it. So if that's something to be looked into, we greatly appreciate it. So, so when we're offline, we should speak and we should speak with uh, the yeah. director of utilities. Um, I think next up we have Brian Terzi who has a question. Hey, Brad, my question is, uh, you know, the 349, um, I think when we had our meeting, we were all under the assumption that that was the final number. If we took Mr. Beeble's suggestion when we meet on this and we took these rate increases out for only four years and saw where we're at, does that have any negative impacts that we wouldn't be aware of? Point of order. We got to stop talking. We can't hear. Sorry, Brian. Uh, so if you just did four years of increases, the hold on, I'm bumping through uh, Excel's. Um, instead of being five hundred ninety-six thousand um, dollars, what I will call to the good in excess revenue over projected expenses, that would be two hundred fit two hundred fifty-two thousand. Um, so there's, that is part of it. Um, and that's at 3%. If you did a 4%, if 4% increase in expenses year to the good $41,000. But if, if, if we took Mr. Beeble's suggestion, I mean, and put it out four years, it would give us the ability in year four, we'll know exactly where inflation is and, you know, how much cash we have and maybe we don't need that last you know eight and a half percent increase look at the end of the day we have big expenses and i know people are upset about the rate increase and believe me i never like passing increases on to taxpayers but we voted to keep our water system which was a great thing we've invested millions of dollars into the system and some of the rates we're seeing you know i know people are bringing up a lot of rates based on different areas. We don't know the condition of their water systems and where they're gonna be five years from now. I can tell you that our uh, public utility department's been doing a great job of upgrading our system and making sure it's gonna be solvent many years out. But uh, you know, I guess my main question is, Brad, is there any downside when we get together at the Board of Selectmen if we just did a four year and say, look, in year four, we'll decide if we need a rate increase in year five and maybe not as much as we thought. No, there's the only downside is having to do this all over again a year earlier. But you'll have more information, especially do five. Okay. Uh, hopefully we'll have more information about the PFAS. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Deb. I was just gonna bring up projects I really can't budget for yet. There are some regs that are coming down the pike. If you've seen the news at all, you've heard of PFAS, you may have heard of lead and copper. There's going to be some expenses. There may be some grant money available with that too. So I don't know the numbers to put something in. The other thing is um, water mains installed in the street are at about $250 to $300 per foot. So if we have any major you know, mains we have to replace, that's really not ranked in here. Um, and then the, the other thing is just equipment in terms of existing pumps and various equipment at our other stations. I, I Again, unforeseen. I'm trying to keep things really tight. Any unforeseen numbers that come up, dollars that are required for some of those things, that's a reason I, I like to have that extra cushion there. And, you know, if those don't come to bear, then we'd be looking at minimal rate increases beyond that. So that that was kind of my thoughts with putting some of these numbers together. Put young person, I think that was first. But oh, thank you. Uh, you know, I, I want to point out something. When we started uh, after the Aquarian vote, we we took on the task of revamping our water system. At that time, we were trying to build a surplus of a million dollars at a minimum. So when I look at this number in years in year five of three hundred forty three thousand. That's bare minimum to me. Now, go, you know, to be fair, going back to 2010, 2011, when we started the renovation of the system, there had been no work on water mains for almost 30 years, and they were breaking all over the place. So we needed that million-dollar-plus buffer 
for unexpected things because unexpected things happen every day. Uh, my friend here from the water department can attest to that. So th this is not pure profit. It looks like a big number, but it really isn't. And I just want to stress the point. It's nobody likes to see an increase, but we're the shareholders of a company. And if the customers of that company are not able to generate the revenue, then all the other shareholders pay the difference. It comes out of your pocket in the form of higher taxes, because this is a water system that is designed to break even and to, to serve the customers. So I'll throw out one other suggestion. Instead of trimming back on the surplus, which I agree with Tom is a very risky thing to do. One of the things that we talked about for years and never, never figured out the numbers to do it is to set aside a reserve for people who are in crisis. Most other utilities do that. Uh, Eversource does it with electrical bills. So if you get somebody who suffers a catastrophic loss in the family, a job loss, a death in the family, and there's a period of time that they can't pay that water bill, that we have a reserve for that that could be run through social services. I think that would be a safer thing to do and a more beneficial thing to do for the community than trying to limit this price increase and then wind up in the same boat that we were in by not investing in the system for so many years and then having a real problem on our hands. Thank you. We have next and I was going to kind of book in about that. Um, instead of looking at this as a three year plan, perhaps we should project this out on a 10 year basis on a rolling basis. We'll get it every year. Sorry, Brad. Um, but seriously, take a look at it every year. Because it seems to me that from what we've been talking about tonight, you're going to see unexpected uh, pluses and minuses. Inflation might drop. Inflation might go up. We don't know. Um, there are clearly going to be some other capital items that are going to come up. And if we're really talking down the road about needing to raise more funds, maybe we need to start looking at this as a long-term project, project rather than three years uh, you know, vignettes or five-year vignettes, but we'll actually start taking a longer view on this and determining what the, what the costs are likely to be and how we can plan for that. Um, I, okay. I, I think it would give everyone better control over not seeing this kind of a, a spike. Okay. Um, some suggestions and ideas to explore. Um, what you're saying, I think, makes sense to me. I don't know enough to say, like, that's a great idea. We should definitely do it. But it seems like the rate increase shouldn't be such a high burden so early on if we are able to sort of mitigate later on, right? I think. Um, so making sure that we're looking at that, that's great. In terms of this potential surplus, I guess, it, the idea that Matt was saying, that was gonna be my suggestion. Like, what are we doing for people that are not able to pay for their water for whatever reason? Um, I know that some elderly folks are eligible for assistance in some ways, but how is that happening in our town for not just elderly people? Mm -hmm. um, so that's something to explore. And also, if for whatever reason there is a surplus that goes beyond the buffer that is needed to maintain, maybe we can pull those funds back into the general fund or you know, the school budget or the other millions of things that are expensive in our town that would benefit the taxpayer in some way if that buffer is that huge mm -hmm. somehow. Uh, so those are my suggestions. Great, thank you. Not to keep keeping that horse, but um, but you're gonna beat it. I'm gonna beat it. Okay, I, one more time. You know me well enough. A um, couple of thoughts on on the, the structure and, and, and their comments. If we're going to use the minimum price point as sort of gauge here, we've already kind of I think generally agreed that that's we're charging a lot of people in the community for water they're not going to use when we do that. We are. There's a lot of people in the community. It's only 25% of the community that exceed that, correct? The 25th percentile user is at the 6,000 gallons. Yes. So 75% of the town is using more than that. Yeah. Okay. So the 25% or 
are subsidized at the 75%. And, and right. So but we also don't know the percentage of the 25% don't what the they actually use. Yeah, that's, that's true. Right. Like, is it 5,000 gallons or is it yeah. two? We don't know that. Right. But, but it seems to me the conversation about setting aside dollars yeah. for out of this <clears> for those who have a catastrophic, catastrophic event is coming out of disproportionately the folks who are more likely to have a catastrophic event. Now, I would suggest if we really want to create a fund for that, that we look to taking the $500 per unit charge up 250 bucks and we take those dollars and have them in the fund. And that's how you can fund it without getting back to the percentage of that community that are being uh, overcharged is not, it is harsher than I think it should be, but that are being that are, they're carrying more of the water, sorry, uh, on this than, than perhaps the sparing thing. Okay. Thanks for your input. Thank We're going to have to start beginning wrapping up. I know we've had seconds and thirds. Uh, we you first, and then we'll come back to you in the middle. So, Nancy Ryan, 25 Walnut Hill Road. Just a question for Tom. Sure. In the beginning of your overview, um, you talked about trying to replace three vitals of pipe. Yeah. Is that recently? Is that over five years? Is that? Uh, I got it uh, 2018, okay. 2019, 2021, and in that, in that ballpark, 2022, those three and years. What are you looking at for the whole system as a projection of possibilities? Of we, we had a capital plan put together back, uh, and Matt's familiar with this capital right. plan back in 2014. Yep. They earmarked a whole lot of water mains. Right. Um, I forget what the water main portion of that was. Mm -hmm. Their total projected out of like 80 some odd million over a- like How many miles? Like a 40 year oh, okay. you know, plan. So the ones we've replaced, what I'm looking at right now, I don't have a lot of water mains that are habitually breaking. Okay. Not to That's say that thing. we don't start okay. getting breaks. Right. That's why you want to have some, like Matt said, you want to have that capital reserve for those emergencies. Um, right. But right now, the water mains are in pretty decent shape. Okay. We deal more probably with um, service leaks than we do main breaks. We, we but I think, think in past years, there were definitely more main breaks. Right. Because we look at sections of town where, like Liquid Avenue, where the mains were over 100 years old. Yes, so the ones and, and, yeah. look at the fire. Yeah, and we just replaced but, a whole bunch of old four inch main there. there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you feel like you're in pretty good shape with that. But we still have to keep putting that though. And it's not like every other day something's breaking in, you know, South Street and where it all is. Right, but you, yeah. you, you, you gotta you, yeah. you gotta have some reserves for that. Right, right, right. Yeah. Okay. Well thanks. Actually, the gentleman next to you was okay. next up, and then it was Billy Michael. Uh, uh, young Zamaka. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, uh, going back to Mr. Mabel's point mm -hmm. on on the issues of equity, you know, where you know, of course, people are subsidizing the, the richest users. Is can 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 the board of selectmen discuss uh, when you have a chance when whether we need to have a minimum charge at all? Well, we, we we can go back to the which we are all members of the public utility commission, mm -hmm. and we can look at that because yeah. there doesn't seem to be a very good technical reason to have yeah a minimum charge price. Or, well, you could have some straight administrative costs that have to, you know, billing, meter reading. There's certain things that you have to pay for mm -hmm. that don't really um, are aren't equated to gallons. So you, you almost have to have some kind of base. And and most water rates, electric rates, utility rates are going to have some kind of a base charge, which kind of covers you know some of those items. I'm not a rate expert, mm -hmm. but that's usually why you have a, a rate like that. Well, I can say we can look at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Um, now I think we build Michaels and then yeah. have... What's the annual labor cost for the water department? I, I have to look at the budget. I don't have the numbers right here. Yeah. Do you know it offhand? What are the annual labor costs? Yeah. Off the top, Brad. Do you, Brad, do you have the uh, budget? Total between yeah. sewer and water, we yeah. have eight employees. Yeah, eight. eight. Yep. You don't know the you don't know the labor costs in your department. I can pull it up. Give me one minute. No, All wait, these numbers no, that are okay. scrolling around, I'll that's not what I get. This is a nightmare. This is Christmas season. All of a sudden, we come to a meeting. 
Look at all of us. Now we have to become water experts. And you know, I'm looking at 2011. Matt, you, we got, we got a handout. This is the 2011 Bethel Public Utilities, July 20th. Here we are. We've got the cost. We've got the comparisons. We've got the year. You come in here. All I saw was something in the Bethel batch, 8%. There's to treat the users. We're the taxpayers. Like, to not have a handout. And then you have you have arguments, valid arguments, nothing to, for us to look at, to read, to spring. And you know, okay. to, to the landlord, you know what your people are going to get hit with? Your tenants, well, your, the headaches you're going to have, the restaurants when they get their acres of the water use. Guess who's going to get hurt the worst? The utilities department of the town of Bethel. Because we, the town, is the best, biggest water user. So we're going to be paying for all these things, not only on your home, but through your portion of what you pay for your taxes for utilities. This is a big deal. And this is a big issue. And it's far reaching. And to get this on December 5th, nightmare before Christmas, all of a sudden we're going to go and you're going to take this in for when we are getting hit, what? But we should be discussing this. I got a question. We are discussing this. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you put these things up here on these little things we're looking and our eyes are yeah. bad. Some people are old. So modern society. Yeah. Well, well I'll tell you though, this modern society is crap. This is yeah. this is not the way to do something. <laughs> okay. Like, uh, okay. Come around the okay. Here's the thing. Uh, Emily, I think it's Emily. Yeah. yeah. She asked. You know, do we have Pura? And you said, no, we don't have Pura. We have this. We have this. We, there's two people in yeah, this Billy, room. That Billy, 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 you're supposed to dress up. I'm going to have a public okay. hearing. The only reason that we have, that this meeting is going on is because we defeated Matt's plan to sell Aquarian. And it may be expensive, but this is our water that you tried to sell out from under us. Now, I'm not going to say I'm going to support this increase right now because I really don't know enough. Sure. And every time I've been at meetings, it's sure. always someone gives me some information that says, if you don't do this by this day, the world's going to fall apart. And I don't believe it when government gives me these kinds of mandates. Oh, we're going to go broke. I don't believe it. But <laughs> does this go to a referendum? No. Can it be petitioned to a referendum? It's a resolution by the Board of Selectmen. Yeah. Actually, but it can, yes. It can be. This, yes. this can be by um, either 200 signatures or 600. This can mm -hmm. be petitioned to a vote of the people. That's all I'm saying. This is the Pura. We are the Pura. That's 100% correct. That's, that's right. the benefit of a town meeting. That's the benefit of us sitting here and having this open conversation today. That, yeah. that's the, and that's what yeah. we fought to keep so that we don't have to go to Hartford to battle it out yeah. on our behalf. And, and Aquarian is under investigation for selling contaminated <laughs> water. Of course. Right. Well, so course. will we. Oh, okay. When were we? we in your term? Yeah. Your, yeah. When it started, oh, that was so, yeah, we it was up. Yeah. So simmer down. Okay, so Tim. Okay, so a couple things. Just just want to kind of reiterate. I was suggesting just making this a four year plan, not a five year plan. Never said a three year plan. And it looks to me from the numbers that you know eight and a half percent may be what you need, and you got to start it right away in order to get through the second year. So, you know, I, I think yeah. you're there. As far as the, the minimum base or the, the base usage, I was suggesting instead of 6,000, make it a lower number. Yeah, Maybe 4, it's 4,000, but do it in a, a revenue neutral way so that, yes, you're lowering the amount and you, you pick up the difference with, uh, with the per gallon charges beyond that minimum level for base. Uh, and I think that pretty much does it. Okay. One last time. One more, one, last time. one, one more okay. historical note to which I think might help. Um, the base usage used to be four thousand. Um, and to to Mr. DeBacher's question, the reason there's a base minimum charge, as Tom pointed out, is that there are fixed costs that have to be shared evenly across the the entire customer base. And if you don't have that. It skews the water rates very, very high for bigger users. So folks like the condo associations 
and mm -hmm. industrial users, absolutely it becomes unaffordable to them. So there was a point in time that we moved the minimum number from 4,000 to 8,000 to 6,000 just to give them a better value for, for the, the cost because that, that base charge was going up. So we said, all right, we, we have to raise the base charge. So let's give them more, more water for that. So uh, while I, I, I appreciate the idea at, at face value, it sounds logical, but rolling that back to four actually kind of defeats the purpose when you plug all the numbers there. And it's it's complicated. I, I, I know that people struggle with it. It's a very complicated equation. So uh, yeah. best of luck. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. <laughs> okay. Well, well, that's why I'm in this seat. <laughs> yeah. Well, we listen, we appreciate your history and we appreciate you coming yeah. here, obviously, because it's really important. And I appreciate everybody tonight being able to, you know, say what you think. Uh, we will take this under advisement. Uh, I think the plan is to, yeah, we're not a for-profit water company. We are trying to like break even. We're trying to keep the thing afloat, um, stay up with the times, stay up with the things that are coming that, you know, Tom Villa had mentioned. Um, he mentioned PFAS. That's going to be something coming down the road that everybody in the state is going to look at. It's going to affect our water rates probably. So uh, I appreciate everybody being here tonight. And um, with that, I'm going to close the public hearing.